Um, I'm just questioning it and I'm asking why the media won't question it. You know, we've got paper trail evidence. We're not talking about fuzzy videos or, you know, that must have been this, that or the other. We're talking about really good paper trail evidence from American Washington investigations into the CIA. We know, for instance, that the head of the CIA was given a severe reprimand by the Inspector General at the CIA for his conduct leading up to the 9-11 attacks. Why was he given a severe reprimand? We don't know. It's secret. Shouldn't the media be asking that? Shouldn't they be asking if there was gross incompetence that led to 9-11? No, and the reason they won't ask is because maybe that incompetence was deliberate incompetence. And then they'd have to look at the heart of the Washington establishment and they'd have to look at the people who made personal fortunes out of 9-11. The CIA guy who prevented the FBI from investigating 9-11 before it happens. In other words, the CIA guy who allowed 9-11 to happen, whether through incompetence or deliberately, he made a personal fortune out of 9-11. He went on to run a mercenary company that specialises in so-called peacekeeping operations in Iraq. You know, he's got blood all over his hands. He's got blood and money dripping from his hands. You know, he allowed 9-11 to happen, either through incompetence or design, and the media won't let us ask questions about what the hell is going on. And here's the first thing which is absolutely 100% 100% impossible with the official 9-11 story. Those pilots could not have flown those planes in the way that according to the official story they must have flown them. Let's take the case of the Pentagon. You may recall the Pentagon was hit by a plane. Um, Skeptics like me noticed initially that uh, it seemed odd that instead of dive bombing into the Pentagon and killing thousands and thousands of people, possibly even killing Rumsfeld, you know, and I don't want to say any more publicly about whether that would have been a good thing or not, but instead of doing that, they actually made a ground level approach into the only part of the Pentagon that was actually unoccupied. It wasn't only unoccupied, it was unoccupied because it had just recently been reinforced. So, you know, that seemed a bit odd. And Jaws, flight instructors said he was so bad on a small plane that we felt unsafe allowing him to be at the controls. This is the guy who allegedly hijacked a 757, flew it halfway across America. How did he know how to use the autopilot? <laughs> Took it in an amazing descending curve and then flew it at ground level, 16 foot ground level, at full speed. Now, if anybody here's a pilot, you'll know about the ground effect. It's very difficult to fly planes at ground level. You know, pilots have said, this guy from the Pentagon who used to train, a dissident from the Pentagon who used to train fighter pilots, he said, I couldn't teach my fighter pilots to do that on a 757. So there is the first impossibility of 9-11. And and I think the important thing is, you know, for anybody who's opposed to the war, is they need to recognise that 9-11 is what allowed this war. 9-11 is the continuing power behind the war. It's the crown jewels of the pro-war movement. And so it's, you know, it's no surprise at all that David Aronovich, you know, hates people asking questions about 9-11. And it's no surprise, you know, that that Tony Blair um, doesn't like people to ask questions and it, maybe it's no surprise that the editor of The Guardian doesn't, because after all, they've bought into the official story by now, and they'd get a lot of egg on their faces if they had to admit the official story was wrong. But what we are asking in the 9-11 Truth movement is, please would stop the war. Just give us a little bit of endorsement. You know, I mean, we endorse them. Um, would they just say that it is legitimate to ask questions about 9-11 and not start smearing us? Because there are people in Stop the War um, who are actually smearing us, you know, as being conspiracy theorists. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm an investigative journalist. And if anybody calls me a conspiracy theorist in public, I'll sue them. You know, it's, I'm, I, you can't let yourself get smeared like that. 
I just had a lovely, naive lady here, probably a Guardian reader, saying, why would the CIA allow 9-11 to happen? Well, here's why. 18 billion budget signed off three days after 9-11. Permission to torture people, which they hadn't been allowed to do for 20 years. Personal fortunes made by the CIA officers responsible. Is that enough? You know, well, if it isn't enough, we knew that Bush wanted to invade Iraq before 9-11. He devoted the first cabinet meeting of 2000, of 2001, when Bush came to power. We know this because the Treasury Secretary, who was sitting in the room, has gone public about it. The first cabinet meeting of the Bush administration was devoted almost entirely to the invasion of Iraq. Now, you know, and that's on the public record. Now, the media are always telling us that the invasion of Iraq could not have happened without 9-11. So why was Bush devoting his first cabinet meeting to the invasion of Iraq? He, 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 he ordered the military to come up with plans for the invasion of Iraq. They had it all discussed. The head of the CIA was there. The Treasury Secretary who blew the whistle, he said it looked like a little cabal to him. And, you know, I would suggest that's what it was. But why aren't the media asking questions about this? You know, it's all there on the record. Instead, they just go sneering on about conspiracy theories. The official story of 9-11 is a conspiracy theory, you know, but of course, because it's official, they don't dare call it a conspiracy theory. You know, the, the theory that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, that was an officially sanctioned conspiracy theory, turned out to be rubbish. But, you know, the media never called it. You know, if you look at The Guardian, you know, that we all like to trust, or the Independent or the Washington Post prior to the invasion of Iraq. They all wrote, the BBC, they all wrote about Saddam's weapons of mass destruction. They didn't say alleged weapons of mass destruction. They said weapons of mass destruction. So, you know, the real problem is the mainstream media in the West. They are the secret weapon of the warmongers and not just, you know, the so-called right-wing media, also the so-called left-wing media. Not because they're like evil conspirators. They're just scared. You know, they've got advertisers who will withdraw their advertising budget. You know, this is not a conspiracy issue. This is a our society is very seriously malfunctioning. You know, the Green Party recognises that. Stop the War should recognise it more. They do, fortunately, identify the war as an imperialist war. They don't understand the extent to which the media is controlled, unfortunately. And that's the job of people at the grassroots.